Welcome back. As we continue tonight, our last story touches upon the recent issues revolving around a very sad reality. In yes, society. the Human Torch was denied a bank loan. Um, no, not not necessarily. Wrong. Uh, Veronica, that is pretty sad to me. Recently, there has been a growing need to address the presence of law enforcement officers in agencies that act overly aggressive or unfairly to the public. This is usually along racial lines, and uh, this discrepancy in the misconduct of police officers really brings forth a necessity uh, to reinforce how our police uh, kind of interact with the public, wouldn't you say, Veronica? Uh, sure, Ron. Uh, in the past year, the deaths of Michael Brown and Freddie Gray... Oh, by the way, both of those people were African Americans. ...have shed light on the growing police misconduct situation in America. Both were shot and died while in police, co co police custody and under questionable circumstances. Put simply, the chief causes of police misconduct are both that the police can act impulsively due to the discretionary structure of their authority, and that the police can take advantage of the powers they have in those situations due to the structure of that specific authority. Now, Veronica, of course, race, um, you know, income, you know, wealth, difference, socioeconomic status definitely have a part in this, wouldn't you say? Ron, that, that, that's rude. Um, I just read the prompter, that's what the prompter said. So, don't. Uh, we will now talk to our specialist, Ms. Gernald, to further discuss this issue of police misconduct. Ms. Gernald? Okay, and so tonight on the news we have this very important topic to bring into your living rooms, to bring to your families. Take a look. Um, please, next slide. No, 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 go. Next one, please, next one. And now back to you. Uh, well, Miss Girl, thank you for that very comprehensive uh, presentation. We should probably go to our other correspondent and see if maybe he has anything on the subject. Brian Fantana? Um, we are just going to work very quickly to get our correspondent Brian Fantana back on the, back online. Um, <sighs> Thanks for that, Ron and Veronica. Now see, policing in America, and police brutality especially, has been a problem for generations. Way back in the 1800s when there were labor strikes, the cops, they would come in and they would beat the workers. I mean, they would literally rip your face off, Ron. Then it was a problem again in the Civil Rights Movement in the 1960s under Presidents Kennedy and Johnson. Selma, Alabama, Birmingham, all of those places. The police would beat the people and they would put hoses on them and they would do all sorts of ungodly things. Then there was all that Kent State Massacre in the 70s during the Vietnam War. And after that, people were like, nope, we better fix it. We've got to fix the policing problem for all black people. For all white people in America. For all people in America. Now, see, this became a problem again in Los Angeles in the 90s when a guy named Rodney King got beat up and there were tons of riots all across California. That was a mess, ladies and gentlemen. And now it's happening again. Michael Brown in Ferguson, Missouri. Now there's Freddie Gray in Baltimore, Maryland. I mean, look at Maryland behind me. The city is burning, people. The police here, they will rip your face off. Once again, they will rip your face off. They are not your friends. Now, there's been a lot of proposals on how to fix this whole police brutality issue. One of the ones I like the best is the body cameras. You know, they put this little camera right here and on your chest and then it records the whole thing. Gets around the whole training thing or fixing the whole police regulations thing. I think the body cameras are the way to go. What do you think, Ron and Veronica? Thank you, Brian. Well, now we go to our senior analyst, Elvis Presley, uh, representing the hipsters down in Washington, D.C. and our very own champ who went down to Baltimore uh, to cover the topic for us. <laughs> Elvis, champ, good evening my friends. How is the hood? <laughs> yeah, well we'll see Ron and Veronica. I think this is a very hot controversial issue and I think the body camera proposal that has been 
brought up throughout the nation, I think that's a great way to fix the issue. See, in Texas, there was a recent state proposal that would let the state government give local law enforcement agencies over $10 million for those who are willing to implement the body camera policy. I mean, whammy, who wouldn't want free money like that? Okay, uh, I see an issue uh, with this proposal in the fact that we need to respect the uh, privacy of people in public. I mean, you have uh, police officers filming people, and what it, what happens when all this footage is disclosed to the public? You know, who gets uh, access to this database? Is it only the police? Um, that's really the issue I think at, at hand is uh, you know privacy. Privacy schmivacy, Elvis. I think that I trust the police to choose what can be public, what can be private, what can be shown to the public, how it gets shown to the public, how it's kept, who sees it, blah, 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 blah. and you know what? The American Civil Liberties Union has even had a hearing with the Senate and has proposed mock legislation that would tell police departments how to treat footage of private issues. I don't think it's a problem we need to worry about. See. With with this body camera thing, the the whole problem with this is that if you put body cameras on police officers, you're you know you're fighting the you're fighting the smoke. You're not fighting the fire. We need to get down to the base of things and correct it from the bottom up. You know you know fix what is causing all of these issues, and then it's a wrap. It's all done. You know you won't have these issues. See, I see what you, I do see what you're saying, Ellis. But you know what? We gotta stop choking on the smoke before we can put out the fire. We have to treat the problem right now and deal with it right now, and then we can worry about the causes later once we've got the problem managed. I think it's too much of a problem to let it lie and work on fixing something that may or may not fix the problem. Cameras will fix the problem. I think we need to change different aspects of the policing system, such as their training, the rules of conduct, you know, the rules of engagement, how they interact with the public. Uh, that's that's really the essential part. We need to change the people in the agencies. You know, bring back the trust. You know, sincerely bring back the genuine policing in America, and bring back the character and uh, transparency naturally uh, into the police force. Those are some really good points they made there, Veronica. Yes, you couldn't even derive those even if you tried. <laughs> I've actually heard that these body cameras. They work 60% of the time, every time. No, Ron, that, that really does not make sense at, at all. Okay, well let's get back to the news. Tonight we introduce to you a piece of legislation that has been under the works and um, in the creative process for a while now. Um, three local high school students uh, Hannah Rauch, Xavier Jelski, and Bradley Jensen have been working very closely with Congress over the past few weeks in order to propose such legislation. What, what are you doing? They have frequently met with President Barack Obama about this legislation, and in the past few weeks, it has picked up a lot of mass time velocity. This proposal involves the rules and regulations regarding the implementation of body cameras. Some elements of this policy include the police officers having to wear body cameras when they are uniformed, not a plainclothes officer, and they must film all encounters with the police that they have. When officers are videotaping subjects, they must notify that subject. However, with a warrant, the police officer does not have to ask permission to film the subject. That being said, this policy states that without a warrant, the police officer must abide by the subject's wishes and turn off the camera if the subject does not wish to be filmed. This policy includes statements that preserve and keep videos taken by the body cameras for at least 12 months, no matter what is within the video. Then, after that, there may be requests to keep the footage for additional time. If the video shows any use of force, shows arrests at a felony or higher level, or events shown in the video are contested by any other parties involved, the videos can be kept. The Department of Justice will oversee the handling of footage. Included in this policy is the blind eye clause. This states that actions taken by police in the heat of the moment that conflict with the normal procedure shall be forgiven within reason if 1. A life is saved, 2. 
the officer's life is taken out of unnecessary risk, or three, if any criminal act was prevented. There will also be a committee to begin studying police misconduct. This will be implemented on the state and federal level. The state committee is reporting to the national committee. And now for a quick snippet from our surprise guest, Kanye West. Yo. The, the, you know, the police, the police, they gotta be wearing these body cameras, you know? Cause like, they, they, they could like lie, they could lie, they could lie about the, the, the shootings and the, they're shooting us, they're shooting my people. And, and, and if they wear the, they, with the cameras, the cameras capture everything, man. The cameras get everything. Every, I'll get more camera, they'll get more camera time, everyone will get more camera time. The, they'll just preserve the truth. They'll preserve the, the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth. I mean, if you got a police officer and he's not wearing a camera, I mean, he could be he could be right up in your face. He, he could rip your face off. Uh, he could just he could just shoot you however he wants. He could just shoot you. He could give. Per police don't care about black people. They could just shoot whoever they want. And, and if they wear these cameras, man, they wear these cameras, then then all the truth comes out. The truth comes. We can shoot that. We can't shoot them. We we'll put them on trial. We'll put and justice will be done. And everyone will be on camera, everyone will be on camera, it'll be great, it'll just fix everything, it'll fix everything, man. I mean, I mean, police today, they're just, they're, 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 George Bush does not care about black people. Well, that's going to do it for us here at uh, Channel 4 News tonight, folks. I'm Ron Burgundy. And I'm Veronica Corningstone. You, you stay classy, AP, go, po, period, six, cycle, day, odd. We out. <laughs>